Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm back in the workshop, filmed a few bits. I've got some cracking videos to release on the channel, so stay tuned and look out for them. I just thought I'd release a video to get back in the swing of putting some stuff online. And this one is mostly gonna be about what I've been doing this summer in terms of work on the farm. Just bundled them all together to save sort of muddying the joinery videos with stuff. Building a kitchen at the minute, a dark blue kitchen. So I've been sort of doing that on the sidelines in between the farming and I'm still working on a big house project doing loads of really nice joinery at the same time as, as working on that kitchen as well, which is a separate project. So I'll release a video on this actually, but let me show you this little window I've been working on. So I'm building some sashes at the minute. They are spiral balance sashes. So they've just got the thin frames at the side so they can go in a normal brickwork reveal. They don't need the big boxes with the weights that slide up and down, but these have got hidden spiral balances. So I might do a little video on them when they're finished to show you how the spiral balance is hidden within the frame. But the tricky one with this set of windows I've been making is these ones here. So these are top hung, almost casement windows, but they've been designed and made to look absolutely identical to a set of sash windows. So to look the same as the sash windows that are sat below them. These are dormer windows in an attic and they're sort of crazy construction there. Wide bits of timber with the two sashes joined together and they hinge out on friction hinges. So when that's complete and I've assembled the window before I paint it, I'll go through and show you how all that works. So that'll be quite a cool video. So that'll probably one of the next videos on the channel. So keep an eye out for that one. I've also got a video coming about the plane of thickness here and there's a massive clue within this shot here as to what that video might involve. Eagle-eyed amongst you might notice what that video is about, but that's a really exciting video and one of the best things I've ever done in the workshop. So uh, keep an eye out for that one as well. And also we went to Wales and did the fastest zip line in the world and we got the videos of like the head cams from that as well. So I'll stick them in at the very end of the video because that was quite funny. This is one of the last jobs I'll probably do this summer on the baler. I've not been doing my vlogs throughout the year, so I thought I'd do a bit of a video on this particular job. And uh, get a few clips that I've taken throughout the summer in here as well. And um, just keep you all updated as to what I've been up to. So it's been a long time since I did the video. And um, yeah, I'm still, I'm still here. Just been a little bit too busy to uh, a bit too busy to upload and, and be doing my videos alongside everything else that's been going on. So, yeah, here we are. We've kind of worked back. Might get a bit more time to put some videos out now that the summer's kind of coming to a close. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be filming this particular job I'm doing through and hopefully get a few clips in of uh, stuff I've taken throughout the season as well as some nice highlights.
deeper in the field, just got a few rows left in this one to do. And there's another field beyond it. So starting the machine up, this tractor's not really big enough to power this machine. It's just, well, it is powerful enough to do it, but it's a bit hard, they're difficult to start up. So you generally need a bigger tractor to fire these straight up. So the PTO is designed to run in a thousand RPM at the shaft which powers the machine through the shaft here that spins. Um, on this tractor you have to start it up in 540 which is half speed so that the tractor has more power to physically start it going. So if we just, that's in 540 now, pull and twist that to fire it up. You see it starting, a bit of a grunt. Rev it up, drop the RPMs disengage it and get that through to the thousand setting drop it back in and we're up to speed rev it up want it to say a thousand on the box there perfect four-wheel drive while you're in the field beacons off, you don't want to look like an idiot driving around the field with your flashing beacon on, and you're good to go. This one here, is, these are your three spools on this tractor. This one operates the pickup, so the bit that collects the straw up, you can lift up and down to keep it safe on the end. So that's down, then up, so you lift it up at the end of every row, and down during the row. And then yeah, just drive along the swath. So if you're not familiar with what we're doing, it's called baling. And we're turning this row of straw, which is after the combine, has combined the grain crop, the stem of the grain, and no use. So they get dumped out the back in a row like this. It makes great bedding and animal feeds, and you need to collect it into a bale of some kind. So the baler that I'm running is called a quadrant. It produces bale of that size there which is 120 centimeters wide or 70 centimeters tall and you can vary the length we can go from like i don't know what the minimum length is the smallest i've ever bailed is four foot long but i think you can pretty much do any length bale up to nine feet long balers we run are a little bit special in that they can break the bale up within them outside strings into little parcels as well so you can have down to one foot size sections. So you can have in an eight foot bale, which these are um, eight little sections individually knotted inside there as well. So but yeah, the basic concept of the machine is it has like a circular pickup, which a little metal tines picks the straw up off the ground, which is at the bottom there. It's shoveled up inside the machine into like a banana shaped tube tube is like effectively the same width as the bale it produces and then that tube when that tube is full of material it's, it's basically created one watts worth of material it shoves it up inside the chamber and makes like one section of the bale there's a ram inside there that pushes it backwards and then while it's doing that it's filling the next like tube full of stuff make the next wad ready and effectively your most efficient bailing is when it does a ram stroke every single time that the ram goes forward it shoves a new wads with the straw inside the baler. Every time the machine beeps it means that you're making a bale. You can see this little bar here is like our progress on the current bale. When it gets to that dot at the end that's my length setting at 244, 8 foot do a beat, start a fresh bale, start measuring another one out. 
this one here is the one above it, it says 42 at the end. It's telling you how many watts you're putting in that bale. The, like the ideal setting for that in terms of productivity is around 28 to 30. If you go sort of down towards the, the low 20s, you're really forcing the material through the bale. You have to have higher pressures on the chamber and um, you make really funny, like weird shaped bales. So, um, yeah, if it's, if it's going to rain, you can sort of get away with pushing the machines a bit harder, but it's not something you want to do as, as a quality control. Awesome. Gonna stop and film George. He's taking a loose straw, picking it up through this bit here. up into the machine to that banana chamber and it's rammed out every time that bale pumps down there's a new wad full of straw going into the machine a little like bubbled lollipops on top of the machine you can see bouncing up and down tell you whether the strings are tight into the knotters. If they're not bouncing, it's not good. So you've got to get out and look at the machine. Okay, indicator for the operator. Wet in the winter, are we? Try and be a bit sympathetic to the machine. So, if you go through a huge bump with the tractor, just go slowly while the machine goes over it as well, so you're not sort of smashing it around. So it don't last forever if you drive over all the bumps quickly tends to like crack all the welds in the chassis.
No, you did this job, James.
straw we're going to bale for ourselves and that's where it's been run on by like the combines and the trailers it got wet so it's just a bit like a bit damp in the bottom there a really hot dry end day with a nice bit of wind everything else is crispy dry so we're just going to move the headlands give it a couple of hours and then bale it hopefully a bit of dust coming out of it
whistle Trump over it. So that geese at the middle, at the front, he's absolutely caned them all. I Yeah, I hit the second one. Is it